Graphoplasian part two. So we'll be looking at the sum of squares theorem and uh, the spectral properties of the Laplacian. So a quick uh, review, uh, we know the definition of the Laplacian. It's the degree matrix minus the weight matrix. And the eigenvalues um, of the Laplacian are real and non-negative. And we order the eigenvalues so that the smallest one, which is lambda 1, comes first. And uh, we'll see today that lambda 1 is equal to 0, actually. And we also saw that the Laplacian is symmetric. Um, and uh, the sum of elements in each row adds up to 0. So L1 equals 0. Sum of squares theorem. So this is the sum of squares theorem. We take a vector x of uh, appropriate size n. Uh, remember, L is a n by n matrix. And so x will be a n by 1 vector. And this x transpose Lx, this scalar, is actually equal to this. xi and xj here are the i and jth element of this vector x. So x transpose Lx is half of double summation over i and j of wij xi minus xj squared. That's the sum of squares theorem. An example will make it clear. So we have a graph with uh, four vertices or four nodes. And so we uh, create this four by one vector x, uh, which actually is the same as assigning a scalar value to each of these vertices. Think of A, B, C, D, these vertices as one, two, three, four. So x1 is three, this is x1. It's 3 here. This node 1 or vertex 1 is assigned this value 3. Likewise, node 2 is assigned this value x2 equals negative 2 and so forth. So x4 is 0. It's assigned to uh, the fourth node. So x transpose Lx is equal to half of this double summation wij minus xj squared, which in our case is equal to this. Now here you'll see that the half here has disappeared. That's because wij is equal to wji. And so we can lump two identical terms together to get a single term. And that's why instead of eight terms, I have four terms here. Now, each term you can see corresponds to an edge. Look at the first term here, W12, that's this weight, 1.5, 1.5 times x1 minus x2 squared. The second one is uh, this, W14 is 1 times x1 minus x4 squared. This is the second term and so on. Assigning numerical values, this is what we get. 64.5 is the value of the scalar x transpose Lx. Now, observe that to lower the value of x transpose Lx, we can take pairs of closely coupled vertices i and j and assign them xi and xj that are numerically close to one another. For instance, take this example, B and C. We have assigned them very different values. X2 is negative 2, and here X3 is 2. Negative 2 and 2. And so what we get here is this term, that is uh, 16 times uh, 2.5. That's a high value. That's actually equal to 40. Now suppose uh, they're clo closely coupled together, B and C, because the weight between them is 2.5. Now instead of 2 here, 
I replace this with negative 2, which is the same thing as x2 here. x2 is negative 2. If x3, this value here, were also to be replaced with negative 2, then this would disappear altogether. So this would be, uh, what, uh, instead of 64.5, this would uh, reduce by uh, uh, 40, so it would be 24.5. So this is the statement of the sum of squares theorem. Now let's prove it. So we begin with the definition L equals D minus W. So X transpose LX equals X transpose DX minus X transpose WX. And uh, noting that W is, uh, excuse me, uh, D is a diagonal matrix uh, with elements d i i so we can replace this first term with this single summation here now w is not a diagonal matrix but it's symmetric and so x transpose w x can be replaced with this double summation here that's the second term which evaluates to this so all i've done here is um, I've introduced the half outside, and so I've taken this first term and repeated it twice. I've likewise taken the second term and multiplied it with 2 here. That's why I get a half. Now, what I'll do is, this is dii xi square. I'll change the index i to j. So this is what I get. Next, I get this. How do I get this? Because I replace DII with this single summation here. I have replaced this DJJ with this summation here. And that's because by definition, the degree matrix DII is equal to summation j w i j so this d i i is replaced with summation w i j and likewise d j j gets replaced with summation w j i so we are here and now what i'll do is i'll change the i and the j here so i becomes j and j becomes i so i get this and now you see that we have the same double summations everywhere. And we also have WIJ, WIJ, and WIJ. So we we'll lump them together. And so we get half double summation WIJ XI squared plus XJ squared minus twice XI XJ, which is equal to this simplifies to xi minus xj square. And this is what we had to prove. x transpose lx is given by this quantity here. That's the sum of squares theorem. Hence proved. Spectral properties. Corollary 1. The Laplacian is positive semi-definite. So this L is semi positive semi-definite. This is corollary one. And how do we prove it? It's a very straightforward proof. We note that X transpose LX is always greater than or equal to zero because WIJ is always uh, positive, uh, all the weights are positive, and this is a square term, xi minus xj squared. So x transpose lx is, will always be greater than or equal to zero for any x, which means that L is positive semi-definite. Note that L is not positive definite, it's just positive semi-definite, because we'll see that L actually has a zero eigenvalue. In other words, it's singular. 
So this is the corollary to the eigenvalues of L are real and non-negative. Why? Because L is positive, semi-definite. So it directly follows from the previous corollary that uh, corollary 2 holds. Lambda i will always be greater than or equal to 0. Now the 0 eigenvalue of the Laplacian mode. So the smallest eigenpair is uh, lambda 1 equals 0 and v1 equals this vector 1 over square root of n of a vector of all 1s. 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. one number of n's, uh, excuse me, num number of 1's would be n in this vector. And we are normalizing it by dividing it with 1 over square root of n so that v1 is a unit vector. So lambda 1 equals 0 and v1, this unit vector here, is the smallest eigenpair of L. Let's prove this. Let x be equal to 1 over square root of n, 1. So x transpose Lx is equal to this. Now each entry or each element xi, xj will be 1 over square root of n. So this xi and this xj, they will all be same. Each of them will be 1 over square root of n. And so when you uh, take the difference, you get 0. So each term in this double summation disappears, becomes equal to 0. So we are left with 0 which is why x transpose Lx is equal to 0. Now, note that this is the smallest value of x transpose Lx that we can get because this can never be negative because it has uh, each term being a square. So by Rayleigh's theorem, 0 is the lowest you can get, which is lambda 1, the smallest eigenvalue. And this x here, normalized, is the smallest eigen, the eigenvector corresponding to the smallest eigenvalue. So, Lx equals 0x. Hence, V1 equals 1 over square root of n of a vector of all 1s is an eigenvector and lambda 1 equals 0 is an eigenvalue. Lambda 1 v1 belongs to the spectrum of this matrix L. There's an even shorter proof here. So here what I do is I take uh, L1 equals, uh, since L equals D minus W, I get this step and I open up the parenthesis and then I, uh, instead of writing D, I take each row I. And so each row of W times 1 will be equal to this summation J W I J. And by definition, di equals summation j w i j by definition of the degree of every vertex i uh, that's di it's equal to sum of all the weights um, of the edges uh, that connect to it that's w i j and so uh, l1 equals 0 1 hence 1 is an eigenvector and 0 is its eigenvalue we can normalize one to get a unit eigenvector v1. This example actually makes it clear what, why. So L times 1, so this is L. Now remember, this is the example, uh, this is the L. We already noted that the sum of all elements in each row of L adds up to 0. 3.5 minus 1.5, this is 0, 0, minus 1.0, minus 1.0 is equal to 0, this 0. Similarly, if you add up negative 1.5, 4.0, negative 2.5, negative 1.0, again, you'll get a, a 0. So what we are doing is we are post-multiplying all the rows with this vector of all 1s and we get a vector of all zeros. 
a vector of all zeros is equal to 0 times a vector of all 1s, which is equal to 0, 1. So, L times 1 vector equals 0 times 1. So, this 0 is, by definition, an eigenvector, and this 1 is the eigenvalue. Now, this 1 has not been normalized. Normalizing it, we'll get lambda 1 equals 0 and v1 equals 1 over square root of 6, 1. All we did is take 1 and uh, divide it by the length of uh, this 1. It's L2 norm, which is uh, square root of 6. This ends this video.